Okay, so moving back from the gas plug, the next thing that we have on the barrel is the gas lock. Okay, and really the only thing to check on the gas lock is to make sure that it times correctly. Okay, and let me show you what that means. Now what that means is when the gas lock is tight, the gas lock hole um, should line up with the gas piston hole. Okay, now for this particular one, the gas lock timing uh, is, is off. So in order for me to get this snug correctly, I've got to go past um, the gas lock. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to go past the hole for the gas plug, which means that in order to get this lined up, I have to back it off. Now when I back it off, that means that my gas piston, excuse me, what that means is that my gas cylinder is not going to be tight. It's not going to be snug against um, the front band and the shoulder for the barrel. Okay, so to fix that, you're going to have to shim the gas system. And to find out how to shim the gas system, just look at my other videos on shimming. And that should explain everything you need to know. But other than that, that's all you really need to know about the gas lock. Now the next thing to check, um, again, now this may or may not affect accuracy, is uh, the tightness of the gas cylinder. Now this one here has been shimmed, so uh, the gas lock timing is good on this particular rifle. However, what I'm finding out is that if you grab the gas cylinder, there's a considerable amount of wiggle. Okay, so can you wiggle, if you grab onto the gas cylinder and you wiggle it around the barrel, you should not get any movement. But this particular one, I feel it. And now this gas cylinder exhibits the same behavior. Okay, when I have the gas lock uh, lined up and I have the gas plug uh, torqued down, uh, I'm able to grab the gas cylinder and wiggle it on the barrel. You can hear it clicking around in there. So what that means is you need to tighten up the splines to tighten up the gas cylinder around the barrel. And that should stop any odd vibrations or harmonics from disturbing the bullet as it goes through here. And um, I'm going to do a video shortly, um, hopefully within the next week, to show how to tighten up a gas cylinder on a barrel. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the spindle valve, um, the, only, the only thing really to worry about with the spindle valve is to make sure that uh, make sure that it actually springs back when you press it in. Uh, now, if you have a screw and glue gas cylinder, one that's been unitized, it's going to have a screw running through it, and you're not going to be able to turn it off. You're not going to be able to to push on it or rotate it. So, with this slot in this position, that means that your gas is turned on, and if the slot is turned in this position, that means your gas is off. Okay, and it was designed that way to be able to use uh, grenade launchers for the military. Uh, but personally, I like to shut mine off when it's a rainy day, and uh, this way I don't have to chase my brass out into the mud, uh, especially out here in the Pacific Northwest. But uh, for the spindle valve, that's really about the only thing. That is just to make sure that it's clear inside. So if you're having any short stroking issues, you might want to check to make sure that it's clean and that you can punch uh, an Allen wrench all the way through into your barrel. So we'll go ahead and rotate that back, and that's gas on. Okay. So moving on to the, uh, the next component is going to be the front band. Now, really the only thing to make sure is that it's not wiggling around. So again, I have this uh, demo model here, which uh, again, with just the gas system assembled without any shims, you can see that it's really, really loose. It wiggles around a lot. Um, you shouldn't be able to do that. If, you, if that does, again, it requires shimming. Okay, so this being loose and the timing on this all basically mean you need a shim job if they're not uh, the way they're supposed to be. Okay. <clears throat> 